Now, President Zekufuado has asked the new Inspector General of Police to pursue a new vision for a professional police service where acts of violence and intimidation are abhorred. The President made the call when the, he introduced COP David Asante Pietu as a new IGP on Wednesday at the Flagstaff House here in Accra. Knowledgeable and diligent in service, the new IGP is also fluent in French and the quality the president found most heartwarming. The person <clears throat> that I have chosen to fill the office of Inspector General of Police is a very senior police officer with a very, very varied history and experience in the police service of our country. He had, he began his higher education in the then Soviet Union, Kharkov. So he's a fluent Russian speaker. I don't know how many of our IGPs have been fluent Russian speakers, but our new one is a fluent Russian speaker. This appointment of this highly qualified police official is the first step that I'm taking in that regard. I think that our people will feel secure when they know that they have a police service that is honest and that will enforce the laws of the country so that the people of our country can go about their lawful duties in peace and security. They will not be subject to unnecessary harassment and they will be protected against wrongdoers. That's the purpose and that is the goal of any decent, efficient police service. And so, Commissioner of Police, David Asante Apitu, is the person that I am through you to the people of Ghana and to the Council of State that is in the process of being constituted, I'm introducing as the person to act as IGP until the constitutional processes are complete. I want to be the first to congratulate Commissioner Police as the and then you undertake it. And may God be with you. Thank you. And you do your best for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your indulgence and presence here. Thank you, sir. And as you just heard, the President Okufuado explaining that Mr. Asante Apieto will work in an acting capacity until a Council of State is put in place. Is the power that the Constitution has given me to appoint a new Inspector General of Police. Now, the acting IGP, David Asante Apietu's rise to the top spot in the police service does not come as a surprise to many who believe his long years in the service have earned him the position. Until his appointment, though, he was the Director General Research and Planning at the Ghana Police Service. But who is the man, David Asante Apietu, beyond what I've told you? I have been in the Soviet Union for six years, since 1979 learning chemistry and then on my return to Ghana I joined the Ghana police service as a forensic analyst I was doing ballistics and uh, drug analysis at the forensic laboratory over time I was moved from the forensic lab after about 11 years yeah, it was a very sad day, and I will tell you why I was taken away in the course of the transformation, because I also formed part of the transformation. 
the IGP is appointed by the president in consultation with the Council of State. The IGP, as many know, heads the police service, is responsible for the operational control and the administration of the service. He becomes a member of the police council and is usually the rank of commissioner. So COP David Asantia Pietu comes to the job with over two decades of experience, though he's yet to be confirmed. He has held varied positions in the service as Director General ICT, Director General Research and Planning, Director General CID. He became well known when he led Ghana's team to investigate the circumstances leading to the killing of more than 44 Ghanaians in the Gambia. He is also well known as lead investigator for the serial killings of some 34 women in Accra in the late 90s for which Charles Kwanza was convicted. However, after 2004, there were killings of some Ghanaians, including former GCB deputy MD Roko Frimpong, which led late President Mills to suggest that these killings were contract killings, which he was charged to investigate. In 2006, COP Asantia Pietu reconstituted a unit to reopen all murder cases that had gone cold. In 2007, he worked at the International Police Organization Interpol based in France as director of the Specialized Crime and Analysis Unit. He holds an MPhil in chemistry and started his policing career at the Police Forensic Laboratory. He's a fluent speaker of Russian, French, and English. The forensic lab to the main stream policing, that is the Criminal Investigations Department. And uh, whilst I was there, I rose up to the rank of uh, the head of the criminal investigations department. It means that uh, my career is deeply rooted in the Ghana Police Service. All several investigations, some of them took me to Spain, the USA, Senegal, Gambia, and then also I became the director for specialized crime and analysis in Lyon. That is Interpol. And not until I went to Interpol did I appreciate that those successes like arresting a serious criminal in Ghana and sending him outside, those mechanisms that were needed in that international level to make these successes were well known and not an exception. My focus was Ghana and not beyond. But I later got to know that the mechanism should be very, very common to all. So when I was with Interpol, I learned a lot of things. I mean, I went there as the first African to head that directorate called the Specialized Crime and Analysis. Well, the announcement of a new acting IGP was preceded by news that the immediate past IGP, John Kudalo, had stepped down after attaining the retirement age of 60. Mr. Kudalo called on President Ekofuado to bid him farewell at the Flagstaff House Wednesday afternoon. He expressed satisfaction with the conduct of the 2016 elections, which he described as peaceful and successful and also expressed gratitude to have served in the highest position in the police service. He also paid glowing tribute to his colleagues for the support given him. President Kofuado thanked him for his service to the nation and particularly commended Mr. Kudelo for acting to halt the takeovers of some state institutions by some NPP supporters right after the elections. Uh, it was a great honor to give this opportunity to see His Excellency to accord this very kind and candid words. Uh, as the saying goes, the first there's an entrance, there's an exit. And uh, honestly, I think I've served my nation the best of my ability, and then I'm ready to serve it in any capacity that the Excellency may be fit. I think everything that we are doing here, to me, it's a very, very good fit because everything is quite candid and it's a professional, it's legal and lawful. So I'm very, very grateful. I thank the government of the president, the good of this country, 
my senior police officers who worked with me, my junior staff for the cooperation I enjoyed with them, and most of all, the success that we achieved during the elections. And again, for the cooperation that I've had so far with the Excellency, the new government, and I'm sure that whoever will take out for me will be properly briefed to take up the mantle and to sustain the temple. Because you are with me that before the elections, the percentage of police was very low. Now we to about 42 percent. Whereas after the elections and also after what we have done so far, and we are still on top of the job, I think we shall raise up to about 70 percent. Of course, we don't have to get 100 percent to get an A. I think the police is now rated as an A institution, and I will be behind the scenes to someone whoever will come to ensure that the peace of this country is sustained in any capacity. To save the nation. That's Mr. Kudalo there, retiring obviously as a happy man. We wish him well. Let's move on to other stories. Information available to join news indicates that President Kufuado is probing his ministerial nominee for Tourism and Creative Arts Ministry, Catherine Afekum. The nominee and her husband, Seth Afeku, lost a case in an Accra High Court brought against them by an American couple. Madame Afeku's integrity came into question by the court, which asked her and her husband to return or pay back some money and also return some assets. Manase Azuri Awene has more. On November 30th, 2007, an Accra High Court presided by Justice Barbara Akayesu ruled against Catherine Apeku and her husband, Seth Apeku, in a breach of contract case brought against them by an American couple, Bill Jig and Patricia Jig. The American couple said Catherine Apeku and her husband had defrauded them to the tune of 217,000 US dollars and a Mitsubishi saloon car. The amount in question is said to be the cost of computers and other gadgets, as well as cash given to Mrs. Apeku and her husband to set up an internet cafe business in Ghana. The court subsequently ordered Mr. and Mrs. Apeku to pay the amount with interest, which they have started doing. When Catherine Apeku declared her intention to contest the Evaluate Jomorodria constituency of the Western Region in 2008, some persons petitioned the MPP's national executive to disqualify her because of the court judgment against her. The Legal and Constitutional Committee of the MPP, chaired by the late Peter Alajeta, however, cleared her to contest the seat. Justice Barbara Akayensu said in the ruling that Catherine Apeku had lied to the court and she could have charged her for perjury. The MPP committee's report, a copy of which is available to join news, indicates that the MPP constitution required that candidates should be of good character. Portions of the judgment quoted by the committee showed that Catherine Apeku fell short of that requirement. The committee, however, concluded that falling short of honesty and integrity on one occasion could not be taken to mean that was the character of Catherine Apeku. She was cleared and she went ahead to win the Evaluate Jomorodria seat in 2008. She lost the seat in 2012 and reclaimed it last year. In 2013, Catherine Apeku and her husband went back to court to challenge the 2007 verdict against them. According to Catherine and Seth Apeku, the son of the American couple had confessed in a video recording that there was a collaboration to concoct evidence against the Apekus. Joint news sources in government say gender and regional balance were part of the considerations for her nomination as tourism, arts and culture minister. The next nominee on the list is one of the dynamic women in our party. She's uh, a well-known figure, very eloquent, a great deal of charisma and personality. We want her to spearhead an area of our national life that in my view, we have not taken sufficiently seriously, but which provides tremendous opportunities for job creation and for big revenues to our national accounts, to develop a really solid infrastructure for the tourist industry in our country. 
if, it's, if it succeeds, it will be one of the transformational elements in the overall process of national transformation. I think for that to happen, you need somebody who is going to approach the job single-mindedly and who will have the personality to be able to appeal and talk to the stakeholders in this very complex industry. In our party, so many talents, but I think a lot of people will agree with me that Catherine Ifeku is somebody who can do such a job very well. So she's the person that I'm nominating to the House. She's currently the MP for Evaluate Ajumoro Jura. Uh, uh, has been in and out. She was originally, then they sent her away, but she's fought her way back. That's her. Very, very tenacious. And she's back again in the House as the Minister, as, as the Member of Parliament for that. I believe that um, she has the qualities that will make her a fine Minister for Tourism, uh, Arts and Culture. But the President has started probing her. Joy News has cited a memo submitted to the president by Katrina Peku's lawyer, Godfred Yebu Adame, last week. The memo says there were no findings of fraud or criminality against Catherine Apeku. The actual trial of Katrina Peku's appeal is yet to begin. What is not clear is whether President Nana Akufuado will withdraw her nomination or allow her to face the vetting committee of parliament. <laughs> Okay, so I, I'm here with uh, one of the bachelor. Okay. Uh, I mean, better wow, booty. Maybe I'm back at the mini again. Yes, uh, minister designate for uh, culture and creative arts. Uh -huh. yes. we, we are here to solve our. Uh, as small, small issues in house, uh, in -house. Yeah. yes, so family matters. Family matters uh. for Joy News, Manasse Azore Arene reporting. Well, certainly let you know what is latest with this particular issue. Let's turn our attention elsewhere. And family of a 22 year old taxi driver lynched to death at Sawaba and Kumasi for knocking down a pedestrian is demanding justice after. The victim of the accident was treated and discharged for minor injuries. Audu Ibrahim was dragged out of a gas station where he sought refuge after the accident and beaten to pulp. A graphic video of the deceased being beaten with sticks has attracted angry reaction after it went viral on social media. Now, mother of the deceased is calling for justice. This video, which has gone viral, has attracted anger and condemnation from the Sawaba community. The deceased, affectionately called Bibribi, knocked a motor rider with his taxi cab. The victim sustained bruises to the arm and head and was treated and discharged same day at the Menchia Government Hospital. But an angry mob chased him from the accident scene, dragged him out of the premises of a gas station where he sought refuge few meters away and subjected him to severe bodily harm. Two people were arrested but were released after police say investigations failed to link them to the incident. Police say four men identified in the video are currently at large. Mother of the deceased, Alima Tusadia, is demanding justice. Uh, doctor <laughs> Amafo <laughs> 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 
kanu a wadi mbo moto moto wura ni ne di na chiri ka chira ni se so nko nsu ka ana onu nsu suka se wadi moto ni ba bon wana wadi moto nu wa fa mbo nu kura na ni fa nu huri ye ana okoto ogota mu na ni tire ha ajuri ani ni koto ju onu nko anti na onu di akumi Ese ma bo police fo amani ni na se ni na o police fo amani ma pompo police fo to mu chi ni pamienu ana moto ki a fo ni kasa wo mu di wo mu baba pata nti ya je wo mu aku e bia ya nche wo bia bio ni panini na adwane mm na o mu abu nu no bia ma wanim e de wo mu bu nu nu ni busi o ba ku ni busi o fo na ba ya ka kire mi se jama wo ntimi na wo ntimi na wiye wo ntimi na wiye su su wa na wo su ada mi su su mi se mi mi nko ho ma nko police station na ma kwa kwa complain ti wo mu police fo na di afunu nu koji police fo nu ana wo mu di funu na ba bebrebe wo ni tam e bia ni bebrebe wo ha wo ni ntakwa wo mpentakwa e da kura na wo mu ko bu nu kura mi mi ntiasi e mi ntiasi e She showed me that this is where the deceased resides. This is his room. And she showed me that one German who has come to her to beg for forgiveness is among those who assaulted him. He used to stay here, but now he's, he's moved. And this is his brother. And he showed me a picture of when he died. And um, this is the boy we are talking about. This is the deceased. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus, Asaridonko, Love FM, Kumasi. Uh, and on this issue, I guess as citizens of Ghana, really we all have to make a commitment and hold the police accountable so they can get those corporates. Obviously, in that video that's gone viral, we need justice. And it is fair that we commit Erastus to the story to see that there's full conclusion. We'll speak to Erastus Asari Donko later on here on the AM show. One more story just before we wrap up on AM News. And multi-TV officials and the police are on a nationwide crackdown on people who pose as accredited dealers to sell fake decoders to the public. In an operation in Kumasi, a number of unaccredited dealers were cautioned for illegally branding their shops with multi-TV logo. Chrissy Deborah reports. It follows public complaints about presence of imitated versions of the strong brand of multi-TV digit boxes on the market. Daily go practice is in defiance of an earlier trade alert. Subsequently, strong digital technologies so accredited distributors of strong decoders in Ghana informed police. <laughs> I am multi TV for decoder. And I'm a Falco Faba. Into a young Cassay and Menor Cassay is a Jack and the Uzi from Cesia. Udo was also from one antiquan robots and decoded, fake decoded, they bring a man for air tone. A good dinner tone decoder and Miss Nosono. And yet decoder, no, no, I'm a little bit rebar, any other coma. So on your friend Kennedy, Miss Kennedy air tone, multi TV decoder. The Nadia and I had the papa because a chassis and no Nippon or the brand or the buyer camera. In a supporter brand, all of a sudden. Only now I turn on a credited one. Now if you just want to public and say, I did I want to have a call you forever and I be aware one year and two years I did not. So I did accredited. Who busa who call busa the NCA a certify a good home. Who busa the back corner say open the NCA certify will be over here man. We need be a no one say I do not want to any other papa. Edward and Consize at Mart TV's distribution department. People are abusing the multi TV brand. When you go to town, you see, multi TV has only three approved decoders, which are also sanctioned by NCA. 
So when you go to town, people have branded their shops multi TV. But when you go inside, you see all kinds of unapproved decoders being sold to the public. They sell this decoders to the public, claiming that it is approved multi TV decoders. So what we are doing today is we are moving from shop to shop. Anywhere we see a multi TV brand, we go inside and check whether you are selling the approved decoders. If you are not selling the approved decoders, you'll be forced to take the brand off. We are not saying you shouldn't sell or you shouldn't do business. But if you want to do business the multi-TV way, you brand your shop multi-TV, you sell only the approved multi-TV decoders. There are only three approved decoders. We have uh, quality from syndicated capital, uh, strong from uh, strong technologies, and SOMO test from SOMO Vichy. These are the decoders we encourage the public to buy. You see, there are features on the decoders when you want to buy. If you go, you look out for the multi-TV logo on the decoders. That's first. Second, you look for the NCA sign. It's a thumb up sign. We popularly call it DOGG sign. You look for these two, encrypt, two descriptions on the box. That shows, that tells you that the decoder is an approved. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. All right, so now you know if you're buying a multi-TV decoder, it's got to be strong, syndicated, Somotex, and it must have that NCA logo on it. Shame on all of you dealing in fake digiboxes. And make sure you buy from an accredited dealer. That's it for the AM News. Stay with me. I'll come back with the newspapers. We'll check out a few of the online portals as well. You're watching the AM Show. Stay with me.